Hey guys, I'm Sebastian. I'm gonna show you four of my favorite exercises for hip and lower back pain. If you've been dealing with that, a lot of times what you guys will feel is gonna be stuff kind of right into here, sometimes into here, and usually into this region. Um, now, I want you to stay tuned, and especially to the last two exercises, they're my favorite and they're the most efficient. With the four exercises, tell me which one's your favorite. I'd love to see which one work well for you. Now, the first thing is we're gonna do something called a internal external rotation exercise, or sorry, stretch. And a lot of times what we do is we're just, we're just gonna move the hip through range here. What we're gonna do, be doing is stretching some of the glute as well as portions of the hip, which can offload um, a lot of the areas of pain in the hip and the lower back. We know the hip and lower back are very intimate in their relationship of, of, of uh, especially when they're in pain. So the first thing we wanna do is actually test the water. And I like to have start, people start with the uninvolved side first, say this is the involved side. Start here for just to test the water and also to see what things generally feel like. So first thing is you just kind of push down a little bit. By the way, breathing is important with this. Three seconds in, the nose, six seconds out, through pursed lips as you're going through the stretch. So I'm just gonna hold down here, not to the point where it feels like I'm gonna chicken wing my leg off, but just enough to where it feels like it's got a stretch in this area. I'm gonna hold that for about five seconds or so, or if you wanna be a little bit less precise, just say a one breath cycle. And then you're gonna pull it to the opposite shoulder, but not so much where it feels like you're gonna pinch your groin. Groin pinching is, is something that is a lot of times very common when people are experiencing low back and hip pain, um, but they shouldn't experience it through the exercise itself. So we're gonna hold there for one breath cycle or five seconds roughly, and then go back to the other one. Usually I like about circuits of, say that was one rep because it was there and back. Um, I say about five or so. One breath cycle, one breath cycle. That's two, one breath cycle, one breath cycle, and then on the side. So we've really encountered hip external rotation as well as internal rotation, which can be very favorable on hip and lower back pain when we're adding exercises in. Now when you do the symptomatic side, and this will go for all the exercises I show today, is just creep a little bit. None of these should duplicate any pain. If they duplicate, especially pinpoint spot pain or the area of your concern, that's a no-no. Or you have to modify it slightly with a little bit of a different position or just change the range slightly, okay? But same breath cycles, about five reps of the full cycle before you go on to the next exercise. The next exercise is going to be, um, we're gonna go for a windshield wiper. I apologize, I gotta play with the mic here. The windshield wiper, you can start in the same position. And one thing I don't like that people do too much on this exercise is that they just get sloppy, okay? The goal is not to be sloppy, it's to create some tension here as we're encountering some rotation, okay? I like to use my hands kind of as rudders, or you can use your elbows to kind of push yourself around to each direction, slowing yourself, getting almost as close as you can towards the ground without having any pain or any problem in the hip or the low back and just kind of breathe in, in the nose, out the mouth, and let the gentle rocking nature of the exercise kind of do its work just to unravel some of the stickiness that we have in our spine and in our hip. Again, a big no-no is just going sloppy. It's not, and you're not supposed to really hold it either. Generating tension and building some support within the low back can really help out with some of the pain into the hip and low back, um, both of them. So usually about five each direction. Again, breathing rhythmically throughout the exercise is a good thing, okay? Now these last two I think are the biggest bang for buck. Um, I'm gonna show you the first one, which is called a cat cow. Now the cat cow, um, people oftentimes do this um, too much, I'd say that. Um, I'm not gonna say it's not useful to do a little bit, but usually about five, six cycles is enough to really work some of the stickiness um, out of this area. And a lot of times the, the pain that we feel within the hip area right here, it's because the back is a little bit sticky. It's actually referred in many people. Usually gro uh, hip pain itself from the hip itself is more in the groin versus the buttocks region. It's a big important part because if you're only searching for muscular stuff here and you're not considering referral from the back, then a lot of times you're missing super easy wins. So in our bird dog, or sorry, in, in our, in our uh, cat cow exercise, which I like to do just prior to the exercise to come, is I like to first stick the tail feathers up, 
Okay, they call it a cat cow because you're, I like to call it a uh, uh, scared cat and then well-ridden horse. Because now, right now I'm a well-ridden horse. If this is painful in this position, then you just don't go as much into it. So use one section of the spine and the other section of the spine as the, in, the initiator of the movement. Usually they get into the horse position here. I like to get a little bit more from the backside and then everything else just kind of comes up with it. Now you can use your head as the other part of the whip here to kind of put yourself, hopefully segmentally, segment per segment into the scaredy cat position. And then once you're here, it feels pretty natural just to drop the tail feathers up again and then let it come up again. And then you're like, hmm, what do I do next? Well, how about the head down and everything just kind of comes up. Slow cycles and doing this to the point where you can try to get every segment to move independently. Again, it seems very daunting and impossible. And as you can see, I'm not very good at it either. Um, it is one of the easiest ways to go. So breathe ryth rhythmically through it. Spend about five, six reps. It might take you a minute or so. Um, and that's a good starting point to really knead out some sticky parts of the spine when working with lower back pain and hip pain. Now the last thing is called a cook hip lift. Um, I'm going to use something like a ball. And the whole point of this is to actually to engage the core while you're doing some hip extension. Hip extension is very favorable for lower back pain and hip pain. Um, and, but the problem is a lot of people just do it very sloppy again. If you watch my rib cage right here, if I'm doing say a double leg bridge, people tend to go up like this, which dumps a lot of the load into the lower back right around here. And as you can see, I'll just move a little bit. See how my lower back muscles are super engaged? Like it doesn't help out the situation because these things are really overworked and just tired anyways. And so we got to get this area to help out while we're driving some hip extension. Now we can do it with two legs, but what we're going to use is we're going to use this ball to put right around the hip crease and then we're gonna use our hands just to situate it to where we're burying this ball just below our rib cage, okay? What this does is it turns the core on. And if you can keep this into that area, now I know it feels like it's gonna slip out, but part of the exercise is not only just getting up, but it's also keeping this in. So I'm gonna use the heel of the foot on the bottom side to push myself up. Now, if you can't get all the way up, I'm going to switch sides just so you can take a look at my hip range. If you can only get to here and you're like, ah, I can't get any further unless I go like this, then don't go any further. The, the goal is to keep this engaged and get this up over time and slow on the way down. Now, how do you know if you're doing it poorly? Well, this is going to happen. The ball's going to fall out. So the ball's a really good self-regulating tool with this. Um, again, you shouldn't feel any groin pain when you're doing this or it right into this area. Um, if you do, you're probably not tensioning the ball enough or you're kind of committed to staying a little bit more in here. So keep the ball buried in, drive the heel through the floor and go until you feel your right butt cheek. It might take a minute and then flip to the other side and do the same thing. Okay. Now, can we do that? Is it? Some people might think, well, maybe I can't do one leg because my hamstring's cramping, so I might as well do two. You could, you certainly could, and I can show that in another video, so subscribe to the channel because they're gonna come. Um, but again, double leg tends to accentuate the use of, of the disuse of the abdominal area, which we all know from a, from a clinical setting that we have to get you guys to do this in addition to the hip, not just the hip, okay? If your hamstring's cramping, what this shows is basically that your hip is, your glute is not working. And if your glute's not working, you don't have a good chance of recovering from this problem until you get the glute to work. So this is a very easy, a really nice starting point for a lot of people, and it's built with super easy wins. The last note on this one is if you feel the hamstring cramping, just don't go as high or change where the foot's at. Everybody's a little bit different in this, but what we know is that sometimes range is too much and sometimes the position changes, uh, needs to change a little bit. But these two exercises, especially in the end here, are my most, um, they're, they're, they're the most productive uh, and they couple very well. So again, I'm Sebastian at Performance Place. We're in Huntington Beach, California. If you're not local, just feel free to reach out to us anyways. Um, we've done our very best to answer all the questions that we can on YouTube and Instagram. We can't always reach all of them, but I want you guys to consider too that um, it's easier for us to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you 
if we just do it via email. And we do our best to reach all these, um, reach all the comments, but they get buried. They're very disorganized. And so if you want your question directly in front of us, just email us, info at p2sportscare.com or call us, 714-502-4243. Granted, we don't get to the phone that much because we're with people, but we'll do our very best to get to all the emails we possibly can, okay? So I want you to subscribe to this video. Share it with a friend who's been dealing with this too. This is a very common issue having lower back in combination with hip pain and a lot of people do look for exercises for them so please share this subscribe to the channel you're going to get all the videos as they come out because we put videos out on this weekly and we've been trying to do it every two times a week as well so um, subscribe like share see ya